Let's suppose that I have a cone of a certain size. Suppose, to make this very concrete, that I start with this little piece of a circle. This circle has radius square root of 90 centimeters. And the length of this arc here is a bit more than 18 centimeters. Specifically, it's 6 pi centimeters. Now, I could cut this thing out and then fold it up to make a cone. Now, let's fill that cone with water. How fast, then, is the water level rising? Here's a very specific setup for this problem. Right? Given this cone, here's the story. Water is pouring into that cone at the constant rate of one milliliter per second. And remember that a milliliter of water is one cubic centimeter of water. Now, right now, there's pi milliliters of water in the cone. So the current volume of water is pi milliliters of water in the cone. More water is pouring in. The question is, how fast is the water level rising? That's the related rates question. I know how fast the water is coming in. I know the change in volume. I want to know how quickly the water height is changing. We can set this up as a related rates problem using the same four-step process. Draw a picture, write down an equation, differentiate that equation, and evaluate the resulting derivative. Now, first, I'm going to draw a diagram of the cone. Uh, I built the cone out of this little piece of a circle, a circle of radius square at 90 centimeters, and this arc length is 6 pi centimeters. Now, that's enough information to figure out the shape of the resulting cone. Since the curved part here is 6 pi centimeters, that tells me that the circumference of this top circle of the cone is 6 pi centimeters. That tells me the radius of this is 3 centimeters. Now, that's enough information now to figure out the height of the cone. Right? I built the cone out of this piece of circle whose radius was square root of 90 centimeters. And that ends up becoming this length here, square root of 90. And I know this length is 3. And what I've really got here is a right triangle. Right? The hypotenuse has length square root of 90. This leg has length 3. And that tells me that this leg, which is the height of the cone, is 9 centimeters. How does that diagram relate to the water level? Of course, what I'm really interested in is how much water is in the cone. And the water has some height, which I'm calling h. And the water itself forms a cone with some radius r. Now, I need to write down an equation that relates all of these quantities. I'm trying to understand the volume of water in the cone. And here's the formula for the volume of a cone of radius r and height h. The volume is 1 3rd pi r squared times h. The trouble is that there's really two variables here, not just one. Now, if I think back to the original shape of the cone, I can use similar triangles. right? This big triangle is such that this length is 3 times this length. And the triangle that I get here from the water is similar to that original triangle. And that means that this length here, the radius, must be 1 3rd the height. That then lets me write down the equation for the volume of water just in terms of a single variable, h. I can simplify uh, this expression just a little bit. So I can combine the h squared and the h to give me an h cubed. And the 1 3rd squared becomes a 1 9th, which combines with the 1 3rd to give me 1 27th. So the volume is 1 27th pi times the height cubed. So now I've got an equation, and I want to know how fast things are changing. So I differentiate. So I differentiate both sides here with respect to time, thinking of v and h as a function of t. Well, now dv dt is the time derivative of v. And this is the time derivative of this, right? The 1 27th pi is just a constant multiple. But I have to differentiate h cubed, thinking of h as a function of time. And I do that with a chain rule. And the derivative of something cubed is 3 times the inside function squared times the derivative of the inside, which is dh dt. To finish this problem off, remember what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out dh dt. I know v at this particular moment, and I know dv dt. That's enough information for me to figure out dh dt. Let's see how. Well, here's what I'm initially told. I'm told that there's pi milliliters of water currently in the cone. And I'm told that more water is pouring in at a rate of 1 milliliter per second. 
Now I'd like to know the current water height and I'm claiming it's three centimeters. I know that because I've got this formula, right? I know that the volume is 1 27th pi times the current water height cubed and in this particular case if the volume is pi milliliters of water then I can solve for h. Right? I divide both sides by pi and multiply by 27 and I find that 27 is h cubed and that means that the current water height is 3 centimeters. Now once I know that I can take this fact and the fact that I'm told dvdt and plug those in to the formula that relates dvdt and dhdt. Now, I'm interested in dhdt but I know that dvdt is 1 and I know h at this particular moment is 3 centimeters. Now all I've got to do is just solve this equation for dhdt. And that's not so bad, right? The 3 times 3 squared, that's a 27, which cancels this 1 over 27. And then I divide both sides by pi. And 1 over pi then is dh dt. So now I know how quickly the water height is changing. It's changing at a rate of 1 over pi centimeters per second at this particular moment. All told, this is a great example of related rates. I mean, there was all this geometry that I had to do to figure out the original shape of the cone. And then the formula for volume involved both the radius and the height of the cone. And I had to use similar triangles to write down a single equation for the volume of the water in terms of the water height. And then I differentiated that. And then I went back and plugged in the original values that the statement gave me to figure out dhdt. This is really a great example of all those pieces coming together.